Hello everyone. Welcome to Home School. So in this video, we will take up the next phylum that is Tenophora. So we will first see what are the general characteristics of Tenophora and then we will go into, get into the details of it. So uh, the members which belong to the Tenophora, definitely they are multicellular. All the animals or the phylums which are there in the animal kingdom, all the members are multicellular only. So moving on to the Tenophora, they are mainly marine. So almost all the members of the Tenophora are marine in nature. It means that they are aquatic. In the aquatic, they are again marine in nature. All right. Then they all have radial symmetry. They all have radial symmetry. So what is radial symmetry? Radial symmetry means so if you cut an organism from any of the axis which goes from the center then it gives two equal halves that is called as the radial symmetry. And then it is diploblastic. What is diploblastic? Diploblastic is it has got only two germ layers. So it is diploblastic It is diploblastic in nature. Then moving on to the level of organization, whether it has got tissue level organization or organ level organization. So this is mainly the tissue level organization. It shows tissue level of organization. So what is tissue level of organization? So many cells together will form one particular tissue and that one tissue will be carrying out so various uh, particular function in that organism. So that is called as a tissue level organization. So one tissue is specifically performing one function. Okay, then moving on to the structural details or the body details of the members of Tenophora. So before that, the Tenophora members are also called as comb jellies or sea walnuts. They are also called as comb jellies or sea walnuts. Sea walnuts or comb jellies. So why do we call them as comb jellies or sea walnuts? So now we will see the structure of it and then you will get to know why exactly they are being called as the comb jellies. Fine. So I will first draw. See, when you look into a example, like let's take an example of Tenoplay. So that is one member of Tenophora. So when you see any member of, uh, belonging to the Tenophora, usually it is round and they have one mouth above it actually. So the structure which I am drawing here now, this is the outer wave. Alright, this is the outer wave and in the center, it means that a ball like structure, when you see from, uh, from a top wave, you get to see a mouth like structure there. So from the mouth of mouth like structure, you get to see uh, eight filamentous structures arising from it. So we will draw it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. Okay. So or else we will just draw it quite even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. All right. So these eight filament like structures, these are called as comb plates. Comb plates. These are eight in number and this is one of the important feature of the members of Tenophora. You have to remember that there are, instead of writing it, I am writing it here only. So there are eight comb plates which are present in the members of Tenophora. So due to the presence of these comb plates, it 
has got the name comb jellies. But why do we call them as jellies? So that we will see a bit later. So now this is a top view, all right. So when you see from it from the top of, top of view, you have one mouth like structure. So this let's take it as a mouth. Okay, so below that there is one hollow. If you see a ball, how does that look like? Above, if you draw a circle, that will be the mouth. So that goes till the another end, isn't it? So that you, you will get a hollow space there actually. So let's draw that hollow space now. So this is the mouth. And here we have some structure which goes down till the another end. So this is a tube like structure. What are the parts which are present in this tube like structure? We will see it in one more diagram. So now we have uh, some structure like this. And then which is joining. So these are different parts. What are these different parts? We will see it a bit later. All right. Then. We, we get to see tentacles in the member of the tenophora. So, two tentacle-like structures arise. And there are small structures like this. These are tentacles. Right? These are tentacles. So now if you look into the, so this is the uh, structure when you see it from outside, all right. So if you just take one cross section, if you just remove the upper one and if you see that particular, uh, uh, this particular tube like structure, what exactly is it? So we will only draw this part now, fine, only the mid part and then we will draw the remaining parts. So firstly, this is the opening which we have. This is one mouth like structure. And then one more structure we have which is the pharynx. And then the digestive structure. Same the mid column which I have drawn in the first one. So that is only I am drawing here. And then we have a anal opening. This is a bit smaller than the stomach. Okay. So now this opening or the upper one is called as the mouth. So which is here. So this outer opening which we see that is being called as the mouth. Next to the mouth we have we have pharynx. Alright, we have pharynx and then we have stomach. After the stomach we have eggs. Alright, so firstly it is the mouth and then the pharynx and then the stomach and the anus. So this is this particular layer. Fine. Now, so we, uh, we also have those comb plates, isn't it? So now, we will join this. Alright, this is again a circular one. So this is the opening and this is the circular structure. So, if you look into the body structure or the body walls of the members of tenophora then the body walls there are two body walls or there are two layers there all right so there are two body layers so this is the outer one this is the outer epidermis and this is the inner layer this is the inner layer. So, when it comes to the body walls, so there are two layers. Body wall, there are two layers. So, one is epidermis other or the outer one and the inner one. 
this outer one all right this outer one is again categorized into two layers this is again having two but anyways these two together we call them as the outer layer or epidermis you can take it as outer epidermis and inner epidermis but this is together this is the outer body wall and this is the inner body wall so between the outer body wall and the inner body wall we have the cells which are undifferentiated cells which is called as mesoglia because we had seen that it is a diploblastic organism and in the diploblastic what do we have we have an outer we have an ectoderm we have endoderm in between the ectoderm and endoderm we have undifferentiated cells which is being called as mesoglia so this outer layer which is calling which is which i am calling as the epidermis can be taken as together can be taken as ectoderm and this is called as the endoderm so in between the endoderm and the ectoderm we have this particular undifferentiated mass of cells which can be called as the mesoglia all right then we get to see here complex as well as tentacles so if you clearly observe these complex are arising from this central canal only isn't it so all the body structures have the connectivity to this uh, central canal because this is the stomach and whatever food is getting digested so that has to reach to all other parts of the uh, body and they don't have a proper channelization like higher animals have so all are usually connected to this central cavity so that the digested food or the energy reaches all the parts of the body so now we will make two openings here okay so one opening we will take one single comb jelly as an example and another opening we'll take it as tentacle so we'll take another color and we have one structure like this this is the this is the comb jelly and sorry or the comb plate and this is the tentacle all right this is the tentacle and this is the comb plate so on the comb plate all right on the comb plate there are some small structures which are called as cilia small structures which are called as cilia so now the outer epidermis so this uh, or the ectoderm okay ectoderm has again two layers and in those two layers the outer layer all right so this particular outer layer so these mainly have the sensory cells as well as the mucus secreting cells we will write it here two layers one is outer or ectoderm will write directly only ecto and endo in the ecto there are again two layers isn't it so outer and inner so in the on outer we have what type of cells we have sensory cells as well as mucus secreting cells we have sensory cells and mucus secreting cells this is about the outer wall of the ectoderm okay we are not speaking about the endoderm so along with the sensory cells as well as the mucus cells there are some other cells also which are very specialized cells which are called as the coloblasts and they are only confined to a particular area they are not present all over the body so these um, these are called as i'll write it here coloblast these are called as coloblast 
So what are these coloblasts? Coloblasts are small, tiny structures. So which are uh, mainly adhesive in nature and they help in capturing of the food and they're present on the tentacles. So, so here on, I'll show it here on the tentacles as well as the outer body, the coloblast are present. The coloblast, these are mainly adhesive, okay? Adhesive is sticking. So, if they have to stick, definitely they should be jelly substance, isn't it? So, since they have jelly substance present on it as well as comb plates present on it, they are being called as the comb jellies. So, these are adhesive in nature and they capture the food. And capture food. They are adhesive in nature and capture food. And these coloblasts are present on tentacles. Coloblasts are present on tentacles. Okay. So this is about the outer uh, layer of the ectoderm. Moving on to the inner layer of the ectoderm. It means this particular layer. So these mainly have the myoepithelial cells. It means I'll wipe it off. This, this has myo epithelial cells and what is the function of the myo epithelial cells? It is mainly the contraction. It is mainly the contraction. So these myoepithelial cells which are present on the, on this layer, okay. So on this layer, the myoepithelial cells are present, which are helping in the contraction. So totally there are eight comb plates which have cilia on them. So these comb plates, they also get attached to the outer layer and they, they have cilia uh, present on them and those cilia also help in the locomotion. And the arrangement, you have to remember this very important. Cilia which are present, alright. So, the cilia which are present on the members of Tenophora, they have 9 plus 3 arrangement. When you, when we study cilia in detail in the next coming parts, there you will understand what is 9 plus 3 arrangement. So, as in now, just remember that the members of Tenophora have the cilia in 9 plus 3 arrangement. Alright. So, this is about the ectoderm. This is about the ectoderm, two layers of the ectoderm. Then moving on to the endoderm layers. So, I will again wipe it off. So, we are only speaking about the endoderm now. So, endoderm, these are like very long cells which usually help in the uh, storage cells and the gonads are also present in the uh, near to the endoderm. So, these are long cells which help in storage. Long cells help in storage. And the gonads are also present. Gonads are present on the in the on the endoderm are connected to the endoderm. And they have some specialized cells which are called as the bioluminescent cells. Bioluminescence. Cells. What is bioluminescence property? The bioluminescence property is they have the property of glowing. Okay. So like firefly. Fi uh, firefly uh, like usually in the night times they will be glowing. That is mainly due to the presence of a protein called as luciferin and presence of an enzyme called as luciferase. So the same property is also present in the 
tenophora members hence we uh, call that as a bioluminescence property luminescence is glowing bio is in an organism so the glow the glow is coming out of an living organism hence we call it as bioluminescence property and the cells which are responsible for that bioluminescence are called as the bioluminescence cells all right so this is about the body walls or the structural details of the members of tenophora so i hope it is clear fine next moving on to the reproduction by put off again these uh, members of tenophora they are mainly hermaphrodites so what does a hermaphrodite mean hermaphrodite we have already seen that here the sexes are not separate so the male and female both are present uh, on the in the same organism that is called as the hermaphrodite and the sexes are not separate here and if an organism is hermaphrodite definitely they should show sexual reproduction so about the reproduction they are hermaphrodites they are hermaphrodites it means sexes are not separate are not separate and hence only sexual only sexual reproduction is seen in the members of tenophora so this is about the characteristics of tenophora if you look into an example of uh, tenophora members two important example here is one is a tenoplay write it here tino tenoplane and other one is the pleurobranches branches and tenoplana so these are the uh, two example no spelling mistakes these are the two examples of the members of tenophora and these are mainly called as comb jellies as well as sea walnuts all right so this is about the tenophora so this is an outer view of the member of a tenophora and this is the inner especially this is the central view, or top view or when you look into the central cavity it looks in this way all right so we will move on to the next phylum now next phylum is platyhelminthes so the members which uh, belong to the platyhelminthes they are usually dorsiventrally flat they are dorsi ventrally flat so what do you mean by dorso ventral dorso ventral means the dorsal side as well as the ventral side so both we have two different sides and uh, both the sides are flat here so we call them as dorsi ventrally flat it means the dorsal side as well as the ventral side both are flat here hence they are fam famously called as flat worms they are called as flat worms because they are dorsi ventrally flat that is from the dorsal side and the ventral side they are flat in nature then these are endoparasites <clears throat> these are endoparasites what does endoparasites means it means that they are pres they are parasitic in within the host we have two types ectoparasite and endoparasite if this if this is a host a and host b and any organism which is feeding on outer parts of an of an host a or any other organism a we call it as ecto okay if any organism is surviving inside the host if an organism is surviving depending on outside the host if it is feeding from outside we call it as ectoparasite if it is feeding from inside the host if it is surviving inside the host 
then we call it as an endoparasite. So these flatworms, these are endoparasites in many animals. They are found in many animals, many animals including humans, even humans, including humans, all right. Then looking into the other details that is the uh, symmetry as well as the number of germ layers and everything. So they have bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry. What do you mean by bilateral symmetry? So here if you take one central axis and divide that then you get a left side and a right equal halves. So that is called as the bilateral symmetry. And then these organisms are triploblastic. So what you have to observe here, so till now, till Tino for what we have seen all were actually diploblastic in nature. So from now onwards, we are coming into the triploblastic. It means there are three germ layers that is ecto, meso and endo. So we don't have mesoglia here. We have mesoderm, ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. Then these are a coleomates. These are a coleomates, that is, there is no column present, and they exhibit organ level of organ level of organization. Right? They exhibit organ level of organization. So, what do you mean by organ level? So, previously we had seen a uh, tissue level in the tenophora. So, organ level is here, so many tissues together, okay, so many tissues together, uh, they form one single organ which is performing a particular function that is called as the organ level of organization, right. So, these are the structural details. Coming on to the various uh, functions here, that is digestion, uh, nervous system as well as the excretory system. So, firstly, we will see the digestive system digestive system. So, since these are endoparasites, alright, since these are endoparasites, they usually uh, consume the food or they usually intake the food which is already being digested by the host. So, for example, if, uh, if there are some flatworms present in the human body. So, what they do is they don't eat the flatworms doesn't feed on the undigested food. Already one which is being digested because these are mainly present in the intestines of humans and in the intestines of humans we get the food which is already being digested in the a stomach it has which has undergone uh, the various reactions and then it has been transferred to the intest uh, intestine after the digestion isn't it so in the in the intestine we get digested food and since these flatworms are present in the intestines majorly they uh, usually feed on the digested food so there is no uh, function of digestion again which is happening in the flatworm separately so digestive system is completely absent Digestive system is completely absent, but but there is an exception. All right, there is an exception. There are certain free living uh, endoparasites of the platyhelminthes phylum. So, for example, planaria. Okay, planaria. So this is a free living form. It's a free living. If it is free, li free living, it is not dependent on any of the host. So, the uh, members which are free living like planaria, they require the digestive system because they are not feeding on the digested food like the endoparasites. So, such members of the platyhelminthes phyla, they have the uh, digestive system and such digestive system also, uh, we call them as the incomplete digestive system. The planaria, these are free living and here the digestive system is incomplete digestive system. Incomplete 
digestive system and such incomplete digestive systems are usually called as the uh, blind sac we call them as blind sac in case of planaria all right so uh, like there are no two openings here there is only one single opening hence we call it as a incomplete digestive system if there are two openings we call it as complete digestive system if there are if there is only one single opening which is acting as a mouth as well as anus then we call it as a incomplete digestive system and that in case of the members of plan uh, members of platyhelminthes like planaria we call it as the blind sac all right then moving on to the nervous system so here uh, we have a network of nervous fibers or nerve fibers which is acting together as a nervous system nervous system so it is a group of or a network of network of nerve fibers network of nerve fibers are present uh, and whose aggregation is acting as the nervous system then moving on to the excretory system so though the digestion is not there because already the digested food itself is been consumed by the members of the platyhelminthes so digestive system is definitely not required in case of endoparasites but there should be an excretory system because the food which is being consumed has to be excreted hence the excretion excretory system excretory system so for the excretion there are some specialized cells which are called as flame cells which are called as flame cells so these flame cells are also called as solenocytes these are also called as solenocytes and these flame cells they are specialized cells which help in the excretion as well as osmoregulation as well as osmo regulation so this is about the various uh, systems or various since we are since the members of platyhelminthes are exhibiting the organ level of organization so these are various organs present that is digestive organ nervous organ and the excretory organ so we will see the um, other details now like reproduction and everything the members of platyhelminthes these are the hermaphrodites we are speaking about the reproduction now and these are hermaphrodites so we have seen what is hermaphrodite so it is both the sexes are present in the same uh, organism and we call it as hermaphrodites and definitely sexual reproduction should take place then about the fertilization so fertilization is actually internal and it is internal fertilization and development is through many larval stages is through many larval stages all right so reproduction since they are hermaphrodites definitely sexual mode of reproduction is seen and the fertilization so it is majorly internal and the development is through many larval stages so now we will take one example we will just draw the structure for the platyhelminthes member and then we will see the body details of it all right so best member of or the best example for the platyhelminthes is tapeworm so we will take tapeworm example why is it called as tapeworm that is because it is dorsi ventrally flat so since it is flat how is how does a tape looks like so we usually use stick so and also that is very flat from the dorsal side as from the ventral side and dorsal side from both the sides it is flat isn't it so since it is um, or it is resembling a tape format we call it as a tapeworm however 
the uh, scientific name of this is tenia solium right scientific name is tenia solium s o l i u m is the scientific tenia solium is the scientific name of the tapeworm a most peculiar characteristic of the tapeworm is these are digenetic all right these are digenetic what do you mean by digenetic we had discussed this digenetic before once that is these organisms require two hosts that is to complete their life cycle the organisms which require two hosts to complete their life cycle such animals or such hosts are sorry such organisms are called as digenetic organisms so in case of the tapeworm so usually tapeworms are present in the pigs also and humans also majorly in the pigs and humans so two host which we are two hosts which we are taking here is first one is human and the second one is pig and the human is called as the primary host pig is called as the secondary host why do we call humans as primary host so any uh, any host in which the sexual reproduction takes place such hosts will be taken as a primary host for a digenetic organism so the sexual since like since these are hermaphrodites since the tapeworm and other platyhelminthes are hermaphrodites definitely they should show sexual reproduction and the that sexual reproduction is taking place in the humans for the tapeworms all right they are showing sexual reproduction in humans and since in the human sexual reproduction is carried out for the tapeworm for, uh, it is the or the human is taken as a primary host other part of the life cycle that is development and all is taking place in the pigs hence it is taken as the secondary host okay so now we will uh, draw a uh, we'll have a diagram of the tapeworm so tapeworm it is definitely you can assume it how exactly that looks like so we have one head like structure a head like structure and then a long tape like structure so here this tape like structure as in it goes it will widen okay here it is very narrow as in it is moving it will widen up okay so here it will be narrow so this part is the head part and the head in the uh, tapeworm is called as the coelex the head is called as coelex so this is the head part and this part this part is called as the neck part this is called as the neck part so remaining parts that is the part apart from the neck kind the head till the end all right till the end is usually called as the strobilus that is from here from here till here we call it as strobilus we call it as strobilus part so now what happens see in the head okay in the uh, coelex part there are few structures which are actually helping in the adhesion or for the attachment of the tapeworm to the host surface all right so here we have two structures like this one and below that one more structure is present so this is structure which is called as hooker hooker that is there are two hookers okay there are two hookers first hooker and second hooker another structure which is present is the sucker that is sucker number 1 sucker number 2 sucker number 3 and behind this 
One is here, sucker number one. Another one is here, sucker number two. Another one is here, sucker number three. Behind this, we have one more that is sucker number four. All right. So one, two, three, and behind this, we have one more. These are called as suckers. Suckers. That is four suckers. Two hookers and four suckers together will help in the attachment. attachment as well as consuming the food from the intestines of the humans all right this is it and then coming to the neck part in the neck part there is no segmentation at all no segmentation okay there is no segmentation in the neck part and then strabulous part the in the strabulous part this is segmented the strabulous part is segmented how the segments are present here is let's imagine from here the strabulous part starts in the young part of the strabulous the segments are very close and as in it moves the segments will become very wide or the distance between the segments will become wide so here the segments are actually very close so it is very close as in it moves the distance between each segment will start widening so here what happens the newly formed parts okay the newly formed parts will be formed from here and as in they grow older they will be pushed to the end side and as the imagine this is the last part so as in it grows very older and it loses its activity this gets detached this part gets detached from the main body and it is being lysed or it is being uh, that we call it as apoptosis or that is called as a death of this particular part but here again a new part is being formed again it is being enlarged this will come here this will come here so the older parts will be moved to the end and the newer parts will be formed here so this strabulous part all right this strabulous part is actually divided into three parts so this part i'll write it here or we'll show it here only this part wherein <clears throat> the new parts are usually formed so that part is usually called as the immature part and every segment okay every segment is called as a proglide every segment is called as proglide i'll write it as segments okay so every single segment is called as the proglide and the one which are being formed here these are called as immature proglides immature proglides so that is they are like almost newborn proglides hence we call them as immature proglides whereas these proglides here in the mid part of the body of the tapeworm these are called as the mature proglides these are called as mature proglides so what does the mature pro proglides have so these mature proglides will carry the sex organs that is the testes and the ovaries are present since it is a hermaphrodite so they should have both here the sexes are not separate here isn't it so they have testes and ovary testes and ovary are present in the mature proglides then coming on to the edge parts all right every segment every segment is a proglide so these are immature proglides which doesn't have the uh, sex organs there is no testes there is no development of testes and ovary in the immature proglides moving on to this uh, strob uh, sorry uh, the mature proglides these are all the mature proglides only okay all together so here we have the sex organs that is testes and ovary present the one 
proglyphs which are present at the end that is so very older ones which are moved to the end and which are about to get detached from the body of the tapeworm these are called as the gravid proglyphs these are called as gravid proglyphs gravid proglyphs so what what exactly the gravid proglyphs do so here already the fertilization everything or the the uh, uh, sex organs which are present in these they have already been used so what is left here is only only uterus only uterus and cysts are present okay only the uterus and cysts are present after the fertilization has taken place so uh, this later on will get detached from the body or they get lysed which we call it as the apoptosis all right so this is about the structure of the tapeworm so the head part is called as ciliolex then the non segmented part is the neck and the segmented part is called as strobili or strobilus each segment is called as the progloid and we get to see three types of progloids here the one which is near to the neck that is the newly born progloids we call them as the younger progloids are almost immature progloids without any um uh, without the presence of the sex organs that is the testes and ovary and whereas the mid pro mid proglyphs are the matured one which actually have carried the sex organs that is testes and ovary and the one which are older all right the are being pushed towards the end of the body and those are called as the gravid proglyphs and these proglyphs the one which are moving towards the end are after the fertilization after the fertilization when the testes and ovary are used up then they are being pushed to the end part and those are called as the gravid proglyphs and in the gravid proglyphs there is only uterus and some cysts are present in there it is like some ut uh, this is a uterus part and here and there some cysts will be present in the gravid proglyphs okay other than that we have two hookers and one two three on the other side we have four uh, hookers no, suckers two hookers and four suckers are present for the attachment as well as the consumption of food from the intestines of the host all right so this is about the uh, member of the platyhelminthes that is tinea solium which is digenetic that is it requires two hosts to complete its life cycle okay so this is about the phylum tenophora i oh, sorry uh, this is about the phylum platyhelminthes so uh, i hope you have understood all the details of it so we will move on to the next that is the askihelminthes we will now see the phylum askihelminthes so like platyhelminthes were called as tapeworms the members of the askihelminthes are called as roundworms so why are they called as roundworms that is due again due to the appearance that is these are usually circular or tubular structures or round structures hence we call them as roundworms and Uh, these are mainly uh, like free living and they are also aquatic and they are present in that uh, they are also on the terrestrial as well as they are present as parasites in the plants as well as animals so they are their habitat is quite wide actually so these can be free living these can be free living these can be aquatic these can be a uh, free living aquatic they are present on the terrestrial uh, terrestrial habitats as well as these are present as parasites parasites in, in case of plants as well as animals all right so it means these are also present in the humans also fine so then moving on to the other details so the majorly show the organ system level of organization 
they show organ system level of organization as well as they show the bilateral symmetry it means if you split it from the central axis of the main axis it is split it into two equal halves it is right half and the left half so these are uh, they show bilateral bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry and these are mainly triploblasts triploblastic triploblastic means these uh, these usually have three germ layers and they are pseudocoleomates they are pseudocoleomates what does the pseudocoleomates means up till now we had seen a coleomates it means they didn't had the coelom at all there was no central cavity now we are speaking about the pseudocoleomates it means they have the cavity but it is not a true cavity it is a false cavity pseudocoleomates they have got the false coelom or the uh, false coelom that is or the cavity which is fluid filled okay so we call them as pseudo coleomates and then they have a complete elementary canal that is they have complete elementary canal what does a complete elementary canal means it means that it has two openings one opening is the mouth opening and the at the other end we have a anus opening also so there are since there are two openings to separate openings it is called as a complete elementary canal okay then it has well developed it has well developed pharynx it which is a part of the respiratory system okay it has a very well developed pharynx then moving on to the body layers body layers it has three layers it has three layers and the outer one is very is playing a very major role in case of the round worms that is we will only uh, highlight the outer layer here outer layer is cuticle it is cuticle and this cuticle is actually very resistant or it is highly resistant highly resistant and hence protects and hence protects round worms round worms from from digestive juices digestive juices round worms are usually present in the elementary in the few parts of the elementary canal and which are where they are been exposed to various various digestive juices which are acidic in nature so in that case actually their body should get digested their body walls should get digested due to the acidic nature of or the uh, low ph of the digestive juices which are present in the host like animals or other animal or animals or the humans but here due to the presence of cuticle okay since the cuticle is present uh, as the outermost covering for the round worms it gets protected from the ph of those or the acidic nature of those digestive juices and it is able to survive in various uh, few parts of the elementary canal okay and then uh, we have other layers like epidermis or ectoderm and the inner one which is usually quite muscular in nature fine then moving on to the reproduction here the sexes are separate that is these are not hermaphrodites okay reproduction here sexes are separate so these are not hermaphrodites 
hence the hence there are, hence the sexes are separate here we can call uh, these as the dioecious members and also we can call them they exhibit the sexual dimorphism okay that is these are dioecious and or they show or they exhibit sexual dimorphism they exhibit sexual dimorphism okay so this is about the uh, characteristics or these are about the characteristics of the members of the ascii helminthes so now we will take one example one roundworm example and we will see how exactly we can differentiate the males and females because we have seen that here these are dioecious that is male members and uh, female members are usually separate or, se or sexual dimorphism is seen here so we will see how to uh, distinguish between the male and female members of the ascii helminthes firstly we will draw a male member and then we will move on to the female member so a male member it has a coiled structure okay so this is a male member and if you see a female member what you have to observe here is it has a coiled ending here whereas a female member doesn't have this coil okay it doesn't have this coil in here so now if you see the if you if if we label the parts now the uppermost part in both the cases we call it as mouth all right so uh, we have seen that they have complete digestive system uh, that or complete alimentary canal that is two openings one should be mouth and other one should be the anal opening isn't it so this is the mouth here so other than the mouth we have a small pore like structure here which is called as the in both the cases it is present and this pore like structure is called as the excretory pore excretory pore. okay this is called as excretory pore again this is also same in both female as well as in case of the male now coming it coming to the this lower part or the bottom part here in case of the female we have anal opening we have anus in case of the female as well as one more pore here just below the anus that is called as the genital pore that is called as genital pore and this is the anal pore whereas in case of the male members we have one structure called as cloaca here so this part we call it as cloaca which is not present in the females so this cloaca is used as is used as a pore both for the excretion as well as for reproduction so this is the part where we get to see the difference in case of the male and the female all other parts are almost similar so when you see an external uh, when you refer to an external characteristic it is this characteristic that is the presence of cloaca will determine will decide this as a male member and the absence of the cloaca or the presence of two different pores for the excretion and as a genital pore for the reproduction this decides it is a female one all right other than that the internal difference when you look into an internal difference very important difference here is we have only one set of we have one set of the reproductive organs reproductive organs that is only one set of testes is present here in case of the 
males only one set of the reproductive organ is present whereas in case of females we have two sets of two sets of reproductive organs are present so the internal difference is number of the uh, sets of reproductive organs present will determine the will give the internal difference and when when it comes to the external or the um, yeah, uh, appearance difference or the external difference that is the presence of the uh, cloaca which is acting as both the genital pore or the reproductive pore as well as the uh, excretory pore and one more uh, that is the one more pore uh, one more uh, in case of the female wherein one is acting as anus other one is acting as a pore for the reproduction or the genital pore so that is the difference in case of the male and the female members of the Ascihelminthes or the round worms all right so this is about the members of the or the phylum Ascihelminthes very small phylum but quite an important because they also act as the parasites in case of the humans all right so by this we will uh, stop the class or stop the video here and in the next video we will come up with the remaining phylums all right so till then keep watching the videos as well as keep subscribing and sharing the videos